Does Python pass arguments by value or by reference? This is a really common and important question that people ask when they are coming to Python from other programming languages. And the answer can be yes or no. Because basically Python doesn't pass either by reference or by value. It has a different way of thinking about things. And that stems from how we assign values to variables. And in this video, I'm going to try to explain it to you, giving you the sort of mental model you need to understand variable assignment, values, and then passing of arguments. It's going to be a little long and a little deep, but I think it will also be useful. So if I'm in C, then I can say something like this. I know I'm mixing uh, uh, syntaxes here. Int x, what happens when I do that in C? Well, this tells the C compiler to allocate an int sized piece of memory and to alias x to that piece of memory. So when I say x equals 5, this assigns the value, or this even places the integer 5 into the portion of memory and the address that was allocated in the initialization. Right, and that makes sense. So when I say, obviously Python's going to go crazy when I say this, but fine. So basically when I say x equals 5, I'm sticking a value into memory, where? Wherever x is located. Okay, this is completely and utterly different from how Python does assignment of values. When I say x equals 5, what's really happening? Well, first of all, we create or use an existing integer object, which is, we could say integer value if you don't want to talk about objects, which is on the heap, meaning there's this bunch of memory that has values on it and x equals 5 means first of all we're going to have this 5 object and it has its own unique address in memory and we uh, assign uh, x to refer to that value or that address meaning we are never ever thinking in python of x as an address in memory Variables are not aliases to addresses in memory. Variables are names that refer to values, and those values have addresses in memory. And indeed, we can find out what that address is. If I say id of x or id of 5, these are the same because they are both telling me what is the location, what is the unique id, which happens to be the memory location of 5 on the heap. Can you address memory locations directly in Python? No, and that's why we call these references and not pointers. Because yes, we can refer to the value, but we can't actually do any calculations with it or address memory directly. Okay, so anytime for any value we assign in Python, this is how it works. So if I say y equals 10, 20, 30, we now have a new list value in memory, and that is on the heap. And y is now referring to that list value. If I say, what is the ID of y? Well, it's going to give me the address in memory. Once again, I can't do anything with that address, but that's how it's working. So every single time, every time we assign in Python, we are um, giving, you know, we, we, we are assigning a reference address to a variable every single time we assign. Now, I should say every single time we assign to a variable. It gets more complex if we're mutating values, but let's not talk about that. So every time we assign to a variable in Python, we are doing that. Okay? It doesn't matter how big the value is. It doesn't matter how small the value is. It doesn't matter what type of value it is. We are always, every single time, right? So assignment takes the value on the right of the equal sign and assigns it to the name on the left side of the equal sign. That's how it works every single time. By the way, this means then that if we reuse a variable, right, and assign to it a second time, then it will refer to a new value rather than an old one. Now, this explains also why we don't initialize or declare variables in Python. Because of this, because every variable is just a reference to an, you know, a value, and you know, values are in charge of their types, any variable in Python can refer to any value, and we thus don't need to declare 
our variables or their types in advance. Now this is changing somewhat. Python remains a dynamically typed language, but with the inclusion of type hints or type uh, annotations and things like MyPy to check on that, it is becoming increasingly, slowly but surely, a statically typed language, but that is optional and that is separate from the core language itself. And you don't need to worry about that just now. Okay, so this is variables. What does this have to do with uh, uh, um, arguments and calling by value or by reference? So let's do this. If I say here, um, I'm going to say here x equals 100. I'm going to say def uh, change, you know, you know, add, let's say add one. And I'm going to say here y. I'm going to say y equals y plus one. And so now I have a function, add one. It takes an argument, y. I'm going to say y equals y plus one. And now I'm going to say add one of x. Now, what is going to be the value of x after I call that function? So if Python is a call by value language, then this won't affect x at all. And why is that the case? No pun intended. Because when we, uh, in a call by value language, right? So call by value means that when we invoke a function, we copy the value and assign that value to the parameter. Right, so if, you know, in a call by value language, y will get a copy of x's uh, value and any assignment to y will not affect x at all. Okay, I just restated what I did and sure enough, we get 100. So that's not, right, so, so it looks like a call by value language, right? But it's not because in a call by reference language, invoking a function or how we say passing an argument means passing a reference to the original memory location. And this means that assigning to a local variable will affect the global as well, right? So we've already seen that Python is not a call by reference language. But what if I change this somewhat? What if I say x equals 10, 20, 30? And then I say def add one, let's say append one. One y and I say y append one and now I say add one to x or I should say append one to x and then I say what is the value oops what is the value of x so what are we doing here I have now said x equals 10 20 30 it's a list and then I call the function append one what's going to happen we are going to append one to y to that list and what's going to happen to x? And the answer is x is changed as well. So people see this and they say, aha, so maybe Python is called by reference after all, because modifying y also modified x. But you have to look really carefully to understand that's not the case, right? In this second case, we didn't get a reference to x passed to y. It's not that y and x are both, you know, are, are equivalents to one another. Rather, both x and y are references to the same value, the same list value. And so modifying that value is reflected both in x and in y. This is a wildly different thing than call by reference, but it's kind of hard to grasp if you're still in that C mindset. So every single time we invoke a function, we invoke a function, right? The value, or I should say the reference to the value is copied to the parameter, right? Which means that we then get inside of the function, the same reference, which means that if we assign to the variable, it'll remain local. But if we mutate the data, we'll see that reflected both locally and globally. Now, this is sometimes known as call by sharing. The problem with that terminology is that no one understands it, right? It, 
perfectly describes what's going on here. But the whole purpose of terminology is that people will be able to talk about it and exchange ideas. And if very few people know that it's called call by sharing, what have we gained? And so what you see then is that this depends, the, the behavior depends on two things, right? The behavior we observe depends on, number one, is the value uh, mutable? And number two is, are we assigning to the variable or are we mutating the value? These are two different things, both of which happen when we use the assignment operator in Python. And the combination of these two situations or these two conditions or these two questions leads people to get very, very confused about call by value or call by reference. Now, I want to explain it one more time in a slightly different way, and then I want to go through it in the Python Tutor, which visualizes it very, very nicely. So I want you to remember that this is incredibly consistent for every value and for every argument and every parameter in every function in Python. It is not that sometimes it works this way because it's mutable and sometimes it works that way because it's immutable. That is not the case. However, only mutable values are open to this modification inside of a function because only mutable values are open to modification at all, right? If you pass an immutable value like an integer or a string or a tuple, then inside of the function, you'll only be able to assign to the variable and thus you'll have this illusion of it being called by value. But if you pass a mutable value and you modify one part of that mutable value, like a list or a dictionary, then you will have the illusion of it being called by reference. And again, it's neither, but it's kind of both. Now, again, I want to go to the Python Tutor. And the Python Tutor is this wonderful visualization engine. And I want to give you a sense of what's going on. And in order to do that, we have to change its defaults. The default, the way that it shows things, is a little bit sort of of an illusion. So I'm going to say uh, here, don't inline primitives. I want to render all objects on the heap. Now that's the thing. Objects are always on the heap, but now the Python tutor will show that to us. So if I now say x equals 5, let's say x equals 100, and I say def add 1 to y. This is exactly what I did before, right? And I say y equals y plus 1. We can even say here, you know, print y. And then I'm going to say here, print x. Notice that I have to say print because before I was in Jupyter, which just gives me the value, and now I want to actually display it. Oh, I forgot to actually call the function. That would be helpful, right? Add one of x. So what's going on here? We say x is 100, and then we're going to have our function add one, which will get that value. It's going to add one to it and print it. So we're going to call add one on x, then we're going to say what is x. So let's see how this looks. So... When I run this, and this is why I love the Python tutor, because it shows things so nicely, x is 100. Notice, we have the variable on the left, that is a variable, and with the value on the right, 100. Two different things, variables and values. Now we're going to define a function. By the way, what is a function? It's a variable. So add one is a global variable that happens to refer to a function object, okay? And so we have our int and we have our function. Now we're going to call it. What happens when you call a function? You get a new stack frame with local variables, and the local variable y and the global variable x are both referring to the same object on the heap. Don't think that x is a location in memory where we have 100 stored, or that y is a location in memory where we have 100 stored. Neither is true. They are both references to this object on the heap, and it is the same object. Integers are immutable, so can I change it? No. But Inside of my function, what can I do? I can say y equals y plus 1. What happens when we assign? We get the value on the right, so it's going to be 100 plus 1. That's 101 for you a little, those of you a little bad in math. We're going to assign that to y, and look at this. y now refers to the object 101. Have we changed the value to which x refers? The answer is no. x continues to refer to exactly the same thing. And so if we print y, we now get 101. But now the function returns... The local variable y goes away, and x continues to refer to 100 as before, and we're doing great. So this is why, once again, people have the illusion of it being called by value. But if I now go back and I say x equals, let's change this to our second example, 10, 20, 30, and I'm going to say append 1, and I'll say here y append 1, we'll print y, and then I'm going to say here y append, append 1 of x. Okay. As you can see, it's basically the same program, but now we have a list as our global variable, which we're going to pass as an argument, and now it's going to be a little different. Now, it's also going to look a little messier, 
Watch this. X is a list. This is what a list list looks like in Python's memory. X is a reference to a list object. And the list object is three references to int objects. So X refers to a list, which is on the heap, and Y's values are all integers, which are also on the heap. And now we're going to def uh, uh, define our function, same thing as before. Now we run append one. What happens when we call a function? We get a local stack frame. And here we have a local variable y. y refers to the same list as x. So the global x and global uh, global x and local y are referring to the same thing. And now what do we do? We say append one. What happens when we append to a list? We don't get a new list back. We modify the existing list value. And so now the list has four elements. 10, 20, 30, and 1. And when we print it, that's what we get, 10, 20, 30, and 1. But here's the thing. Did we just assign a new value to y? No. We mutated the list to which the local y and the global x are both referring. And so when the function goes away, the global x is still referring to that list, and that list has been modified. So now when I say print x, I will once again get 10, 20, 30, and 1. And this is why mutable data can really mess you up. This is why you have to think twice or seven times before you pass a mutable value to a function without knowing whether the function is going to modify it because the function absolutely positively can. And this is why people think that we are passing by reference even though we are not. I hope that this helps to clarify things for all of you. If you have more questions about call by reference, call by value, any of this stuff, leave it in the comments. I love answering these sorts of things. If there are other things that are confusing you, let me know. Once again, leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back real soon with lots more about Python and pandas and everything in between. See you soon.